can you become the best electrician on the planet in 10 years? All right, this was actually a really good comment from Andrew Spain on the we want your opinion, we want your feedback video. Actually, there's been so much good feedback. I've been reading through all the comments and dude, there's tons of really good stuff on there. So I'll probably do a response video to all of that. There's a lot, but I'll like pick, you know, things that I see repetitions in and things that I like didn't realize. Anyways, I'll do a video on all that stuff. If you guys haven't seen it, please go check the video out just so that you can leave comments and things, ideas that you think that we should be doing better as a company and what you wanna see on our videos and all that kind of stuff. So please leave comments under that video. Uh, but Andrew Spain, his question or his thing that he would like to see electrician you do <laughs> is, I want a 10 year plan for becoming the best electrician possible. Like traveling position without classroom hours so I can gain an enormous amount of on-the-job experience or a local four-year apprenticeship program, union, non-union, etc. So, you know, you would go through school um, and how to eventually branch out in the electrical related fields like inspecting or project management so I don't destroy my body forever. All right, so here's the deal. In 10 years, if you want to be the best electrician, that is what you said, B-E-S-T, best. You can't be the best. After 10 years, you're not gonna be the best. After 10 years of doing anything, you're not gonna be the best at it because there's people out there that have been doing it for 30, 40 years. So I'm gonna shoot you down for a second, but I'm gonna pick you back up and push you along and give you a pat on the back with some direction. So stick with this. I have been doing this for 16, almost 17 years. That's a blink of an eye. You know, like that, to a second year apprentice, they're like, holy crap, you know, 16 years, that's forever. But to like this old 70 year old dude that's still out there like running crews, smoking cigarettes, got a couple helpers running around doing dumb stuff, you know, like that's nothing. If you've been doing this for 40 years, 16 years, they know exactly what you don't know. So you're not gonna be the best in 10 years. You can try, and I do think that that's a good thing to have that gumption, to have that drive, to like always be studying and stuff. So I'm not gonna give you a direction. That's what life has in store for you, my friend, is that you need to pick the direction. And if it's not clear to you, that's the problem. <laughs> but that's the solution. You just gotta pick one and stop thinking about it so much and just pick one and go with it. There's multiple ways up the mountain, right? I had this conversation on my Journey to Master channel, on this channel, union or non-union. If you go union, you're gonna have kind of an entire learning path set out for you. You're gonna be taking care of, un uh, taking care of. unions are great, they provide a lot. It's gonna be a little bit more of a steady, slow and steady kind of pace um, because of the way that the, the union operates. If you go non-union, non-union can fluctuate a lot, meaning like you can, your pay can increase more. You can get pays that are based off of whatever, you know, there's not pay scales like there is in the union. There's not like time in service that you have to do certain things before you can go over here and do other things. Um, there's, it's kind of a lot more like free, However, most of the time it doesn't come with the, the like really good supportive education structure. So it depends on your personality type really. Both are great. I mean, I've, I've seen some phenomenal union electricians. I've seen some phenomenal non-union electricians. I've seen some piece of shit, terrible union electricians. And that's all, just union. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I've seen some really bad non-union people as well. And uh, non-union, there's still an education structure. You, if you have a company that's in the IEC and pays a bunch of money to have their guys go through the AEC, or the IEC, um, you could go through the IEC school. There's other schools too. There's other people that have education platforms. So um, there's different ways if you're gonna do the kind of like merit system and that's what we call non-union are called merit shops because it's all about how hard you work what you put in you can influence your pay you can move around you can do kind of whatever you want within the bounds of your merit uh, whereas this is more of a static structure like military or, or like you know where there's ranks and things like that that you kind of have to get to um, both are phenomenal paths up the mountain just like if you're ever like on a mountain and you're hiking, there's gonna be people like grandma and grandpa that are just up there having like a nice hike, right? They're going at their own pace. And then you've got like 
these little youngsters that are like flying up the thing, just running and running and running. They could be on either paths. There could be a smooth kind of paved, long-term, slow path. There could be like this really arduous, crazy rock climb that'll get you all the way up there. It's like, what kind of adventurer are you? I'm the kind of adventurer that likes to look danger in the face and, and like scream at danger and prove danger that I'm more dangerous. But anyways, that's the way that I like to do things. I don't like to be in a rigid structure. I was in the Marines and I hated it because it's like, oh God, I don't, I have a problem with authority. I have a problem with people just telling me to do whatever the fuck I, that they want me to do. Now, all that being said, I loved the Marines. I support the military, support people in the military. It's not about that. It's just my personality type and who I am. Um, I would not have done well in the union. I just know that it would have been too slow and grueling for me, even though that's a good thing for some people. That structure is good for people too. I can't handle structure. I hate structure. I like things to be varying and changing. And so um, my path, I would have been on the, the, the varying crazy rock climbing side where somebody might have been on the paved side, but I also am gonna be the kid on the crazy side, not the grandma on the crazy side. There's kids and grandmas on the easy side too. And so what I'm saying is like your personality type and how you work, are you gonna be the person that's just slow and kind of like shows up for work every day, doesn't give a shit, just there for your paycheck? And you know, like you're gonna do some work and go home and you're not gonna read books, you're not gonna study, you're not really gonna care. That's grandma and grandpa over there. Are you gonna be the kid that's running up, trying to get every at like overtime job, at weekends, working, do as much work as you can do whenever you can do it, read every single book, buy every single book that's made by anybody about this topic, read every you know video. Like, are you gonna be the crazy kid? Because the grandma and the kid are gonna get to the top at way different times. The grandma's probably not even ever gonna get to the top if we're being honest. Like they've got hip problems, they're fucking like, you know, they're just die. They gotta turn around and go back down the fucking mountain. The kids gotta get to the top. So it's more about your personality. Either path, you can make it however you want. It's just, do you want the more static structure environment that is also a what I consider a slower path? Or do you want a path that uh, is a lot more flexible and you can go kind of anywhere and do anything um, at whatever pace you want to set for yourself? That's the first thing. Second thing is, should you go to schooling or should you not go to schooling? I think with me, I am a self teacher, an autodidact, I think is what they call that. Uh, I like to read books. I like to learn things and teach myself. I don't like being professed to. I love having a conversation with somebody that's very knowledgeable and gaining stuff and like li listening, taking notes and learning. It's not that I don't like somebody professing to me, but I don't like the rigidity of sitting in a classroom and going to a class one night every week and having to do homework and turn homework in and get grades and like all the shit that goes with learning. It's not just learning, it's about going and being a part of this fixed structure. Um, and that's what I don't like. So I rather sit and read books and buy books and have conversations and talk and email authors and be like, hey, how, how did, did, when you were writing this, like, what did you mean by this? You know, like I'm, I'm like, I hustle and I push. So I think if you're like that, give it 30 or 40 years, bro, and you'll be the best. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here at 16 and I'm like, all right, I got, you know, 30 more years in me, maybe, I, I don't know, but like I've realized you're never gonna be the best. There's always gonna be somebody better. And that's okay, that's good. Because it means that you always have something to learn. You don't wanna be the best because then nobody can teach you anything really. Um, and I think as a humble student, you should always be a humble student in this trade. As a humble student, when you look at things as everything's a lesson, and I don't care if a helper's telling me his idea and he has a better idea, I'm gonna go with that and I'm gonna tell him like, dude, that was a dope idea, like really good job. I'm always gonna be that humble one because everybody has something to teach you. The second you stop learning or you think you know the most or you think you are the best, that's when you stop and start to stagnate. And uh, I don't know, I just think that's not a good way to go about learning a thing, I think. Even if you're 80 years old, you're still out in the field and like you have mind powers and you can just think short circuits away. <laughs> you know, like be humble and always open your ears and open your mind and be, be like ready for anything that can come your way. 
This field's massive. There's so much that you can do throughout all of it. I do recommend for your path though, you did kind of ask about your path. I would probably start with residential. If you're gonna go non-union, if you're gonna go union, it's kind of like whatever they throw you in, but I think with non-union, like that's how I came up, never went through any schooling or anything, just taught myself. Going into construction, new construction, got me used to what all the materials were and like what things are called and what wires do what and where things go. And it didn't really like, there was no bad that I could do necessarily because I was just installing material. I wasn't working on live circuits in like a 480 volt panel, I'm gonna blow myself up. Um, it just allowed me to express my work ethic, to see how systems come together. So at the end, when you energize them, it's like, oh, okay, now I know what a rough in is. And then when you come back and do a trim out or make ready or anything like that, you can come back and be like, oh, now this is how everything fits together. And then you do a few of those over a certain amount of years, like I don't know, maybe like two years would be a good idea to go through all of that. Maybe longer, I mean, really, and now, cause you have to get certain experience by the time you're a journeyman. So I would say, yeah, first two years, do residential. Um, if, if you could do like upscale residential rather than just track homes, track homes is just the same shit over and over and over and over and over, like every day. Um, so you're just kind of blowing and going. There's less care, less going on, less learning that you're gonna do. If you get into like big houses, like 10,000, 20,000 square foot custom homes, there's so much intricate detail and things that have to be thought of and just weirdness to these houses um, that you learn an incredible amount. So after you spend a couple years doing that, then I would go to service. Service is maintenance. Um, and I would specifically do commercial service. So commercial service, um, you're gonna learn about like what contactors are, what capacitors are, how to test and solve problems for things. I'm trying to think, yeah, like weird, crazy breakers, like weird old kind of analog con contactors versus like newer contactors and auxiliaries and like, you're just gonna learn about a bunch of sh stuff on like how machines work and like what. Every day you're running into a problem. And so after two years, I think you have enough of an understanding to be like, okay, I don't know how to work with conductors and breakers and how it all works and how to not kill myself by this point. Um, so jumping into service work and being like, okay, now let's troubleshoot problems because I know how wiring works. I know how the systems work. So now when there's a problem, it gets me to think, okay, so how do I solve this? What could possibly be the problem? And that's where all these fucking books come from. <laughs> it's like, once you start digging into that, you're gonna have your code book out every single day to figure out, okay, like I just, this thing like blew up and I gotta go put some new whatever in. What does code say that I can do for this? And it's just every single day, it's like problem, find a solution, boom. Problem, find a solution, boom. So uh, it's not really wiring anything new. You're just going and you're seeing other people's work, which is great. You can see just terrible work, but you can see some clean ass work too. So it's just a great environment to be into service. I don't necessarily like residential service, but it is something you need to do. If you can find a company to work for that has commercial and residential on their trucks, that says we do residential and commercial, that's probably your company, construction for the first two years. And then if you have a company that you can find that's like residential commercial uh, service, that's the company that I would go to and squat with them for a few years. Um, probably better to do like three years and three years though. Um, that's what I did. I did three years, three years, and then uh, decided I was gonna go run my own company because at six years I can actually test for my master electrician's license. Ended going back and working for a, a new construction outfit again, doing big custom homes. But the amount that I knew when I came back to that was like, holy crap. I leveled up because I'd spent years just brain powering through troubleshooting. And so uh, did some industrial as well in between there, came across like solar, UPS systems, battery backups, transformers, generators, motors like all kinds of stuff. So by the time, you know, I'm like eight years in, I have a really good understanding. Um, when I was probably six years in, I started, well, no, I think I was like eight to 10 years in when I started being like, okay, there's not enough learning material out here for people. There's not videos anywhere. Nobody's got good material to help people understand how to be an electrician. So like, dude, I'm gonna make some videos. And that's when I started all this. Now, me starting all of this and teaching and reading in books and diving in, like how do I explain 
harmonics to a crowd of people that have no clue, but they're curious how it works. I have to go read 17 fucking books and go through, put articles together and like educate myself on something thoroughly and wrap my head around it and fully understand it. It's, all, it's almost like teaching makes you better at anything that you do. Because you have to explain it in a way that somebody else's brain works for them to understand it. So you have to understand a complex thing, break it down into a simple explanation and give it to them so it actually translates and doesn't just confuse them. So that's the great thing about being a journeyman too, is once you have an apprentice under you, you get to do this every day. You get to teach them, explain things, and you're gonna come across some shit that you thought you knew, but you realize you're wrong or you didn't know as well as you thought you did. So you're gonna have to go dig in some books or open up online and like read through some stuff. Like, how do I explain this to them? And then when you're in the truck, you'll be like, all right, dude, so this is how this works, boom. But it forces you to learn more because you need to explain things. Making videos like this has done the same exact thing. So anyways, that's a long explanation. I'm really sorry for how long that was, but uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Um, what you think about Mr. Andrew Spain's comment. But yeah, uh, play the slow game. Be a student, stop trying to be a teacher, stop trying to tell everybody what you know. Nobody gives a shit, so um, just play the slow game. Work fast, do fast, read fast, do all of it, but understand you're playing like a 30 to 40 year game. You know, you're not gonna make it in 10 years. In 10 years, you'll have a really good head on yourself though. If you can understand a whole bunch of books and you've got, you know, ladder logic and how current works and inductive reactants and capacitive reactants and how harmonics work and like all this crazy shit. If you can understand all of it, or at least by 10 years, you should probably start to be able to understand a lot of these concepts. Um, then there becomes this moment, I would say at like 12 years ish, where this like, this thing pops in your head and you're like, holy shit, I get it. I get all of it. It all like just clicks in. So there's no more confusion on anything. You just, you understand how electricity works and what it is and how components work and what to look for and what not to look for. What's a waste of time and what's not, you know, like you, things just click at a certain level. So 10 years, 10 to 12 years, I think is, is probably like where that clicks. You think you're gonna know a lot of shit. When you're doing this for six years, and you're going to test for your master, and you're like, yeah, I know so much. I'm like, I get a master, I, I, I know so much. And then the next six years, you're gonna be like, holy fuck, when I was testing for my master, sure, I knew a lot of code, but I didn't know shit about like anything. You know, there's still all kinds of stuff. Even me sitting here professing to you and telling you guys all these things, there's tons of stuff that I don't know and I don't even know what I don't know. You know, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. So anyways, enough blabbing at you. Hope that helped, homie. Uh, thanks for leaving comments. I'm going through guys, your guys' comments uh, for the next couple months. Just, I'm basically just doing videos straight out of comments. So definitely leave comments. Thank you so much. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.